Tasmania Talks with Aaron Stevens. Weekday mornings from nine. COVID safe. Uh, more than two million people across Australia have downloaded the app. But there are still some who won't because of privacy concerns. And as we discovered in our Facebook poll, a lot of people don't have the technology available to them to get the app. Uh, Gihan Pereira is a futurist and has researched the app extensively. Good morning. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Great to be here. Have you downloaded the app yet? Yes, I have. I definitely have. So how does it work? Well, I think it's, uh, it's, what they've done is quite a good thing, Aaron. So what the, the way the app works is that you download it to your phone and then it, it's not really very useful at the moment, but once we start easing some of the restrictions and we're going to start going out and about and mingling with each other, that's when it becomes useful because if I come close to somebody who's also got the app and I'm with them for a, for a period of time and the app says 15 minutes. So let's say we have restaurants open again and I can go and have a, I can go and have a meal at a restaurant and I'm sitting at a table with my family and friends, but there are people at nearby tables. If they've also got the app, then our phones are just going to exchange our information with each other. And then it means that sometime later, if I get tested positive for COVID-19, then the health authorities can notify the through the app can notify the people that I've been in, I've been in contact with. So the data is only stored on my phone and other people's phones. It's not uploaded to any central server until somebody gets tested positive. And when that happens, the health authorities then get the information, the contact details of the people I've been close to, and then they can contact them and make sure that they're tested as well. Kihan, uh, why, why 15 minutes? I mean, th- this is no good for someone like Julie, whose uh, uh, letter I just read, who's just passing by people uh, on a path. You have to be with someone for a long period of time. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And that's why at the moment, uh, if you just pass by somebody on a path, then the app won't register that you've been close to them. And the, the reason they've chosen 15 minutes, I guess they've looked at what's practical. So if they made it five minutes, then obviously there will be they will be tracking more people or they'll get data from more people, but it just increases the burden on the health authorities to then have to go out and contact everybody that you've been really close to. If they make it an hour, then it's not going to get enough people. It's not going to collect details for enough people. So um, some smart people have figured out that 15 minutes is about the right amount of time. That means we're going to get enough information that's going to make it useful to the authorities without overwhelming them with having to contact too many people. So can this app app track me? Uh, It doesn't track your location, which is one of the best things about it. So there have been other apps that have been proposed around the world where they want to track um, through GPS they want to actually track where people are. So um, at the moment, some countries in Europe are looking at uh, similar sort of apps, but some of them want to track location in the UK and France. At the moment, they're looking at apps which will track your location. And from a health perspective, that's better because the the coronavirus can last on surfaces. If I go to a restaurant today, um, the virus might be around from somebody who went there the day before if, if, if it hadn't been cleaned properly. So tracking your location is better from a health um, perspective, but from a privacy perspective, it's not as good. So I think uh, far fewer people would download the app if they knew that it was tracking your location, but it doesn't. It doesn't. All it does is track the, um, it exchanges with the, these keys of people that you've been close to. Are there any privacy it's, concerns? Well, the government has seems to be bending over backwards to reduce the privacy concerns. So even though when you download the app, you register with your name and your mobile phone number, the government's already said, and the app will allow you to put in a fake name. And it has to put in your right phone number, of course, because it has to be able to contact you if you've been close to somebody who's been uh, tested positive. Uh, but you can have a fake name. And then when the app exchanges names and phone numbers with people you're close to, it's not that I get the names and phone numbers. That I, I personally don't get the names and phone numbers of the people I've been close to. It's, it's stored in an encrypted form, and that's only available to health authorities when somebody gets tested positive. So even though we're exchanging details about ourselves, it's not in a way that any of us can see. And the 
and it's not going to be available to any Commonwealth government agency either. It's only going to be available to the state and territory health authorities. So they're doing everything they can to try and convince us that they're looking and they've looked at all the privacy concerns and they're trying their best to find the right balance between getting the information that they need and also trying to protect their privacy. And I think they've, I think they've struck a good balance there. And the, the fake name's interesting. I, I, I don't think I could do that. I'd, I'd put in a fake name and they'd call me to warn me about coronavirus and I'd be like, no, that person doesn't live here. I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> That's right. Yes, we don't have Donald Duck here. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you have for people who can't download the app because of the, the lack of technology. Yeah, so this is always going to be one of the challenges that because they want to have the highest level of security in there to protect our privacy, then generally people need a fairly modern smartphone. So they need something that's um, not quite the latest, but fairly recent and with all the updates and all the software updates. And it means that some people just won't be able to download or use the app. Because we've spoken and, uh, to people, sorry, we've spoken to people who've got phones that are four years old that aren't compatible to the app. I mean, that's that's reasonably recent, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. But this is where where we have the problem where you want to make sure that the security and um, the security of the operating system and the phone is as strong as possible sure. to, to make sure that the app can't be hacked. And so what it means is that there's some people, even if they want to, they just won't be able to enrol in this in this contact tracing program. Um, and the good news is not everybody needs it. So um, the government's advice, as I've said, if you have 40% of people who've got the app and who are using it actively, um, that's enough to make it useful. If you have less than that, then it's not going to be useful because there won't be enough people who the app will be able to, uh, to record. Um, if there's more than that, even better, but you will never get 100% because some people won't want to do it and some people who do want to do it, they won't be able to because they won't have a phone that's new enough. Okay. Thanks for answering some of our questions, Gian. Appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Gian Pereira, a futurist uh, talking about the app. Uh, does that set your mind at ease? Tasmania, Tasmania Talks, Talks with, with Aaron, Aaron Stevens. Stevens. Weekday mornings from 9.